Well, it's a picture of students at Middlebury College in Vermont preventing a lecture by sociologist Charles Murray last week. Instead of choosing not to attend the lecture, God forbid listening to his ideas and then debating them, the students attacked him and even injured a professor escorting Murray so badly that she went to the hospital. Well, thankfully, some professors are fed up with this. People using violence to silence ideas. Jay Perini is a longtime English professor at Middlebury, a novelist, a biographer, and he joins us now. Professor, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you, Tucker. It's good to be on your show. So I, I doubt, I'm just guessing, you agree with Charles Murray. I don't think you're a figure on the right, but you seem... Oh, God, just, no. no, no. Right. That's what I thought. And so, but you're no, no. distressed, I, I think I'm interpreting this correctly, by the unwillingness of students to hear ideas they disagree with. And so you've come up with a list of principles that really, ugh, I love them so much, I don't want to suck up too much, but they were, they were great. Things like hey, say this. Nice oh. things, say nice things. Go ahead. Uh, no, it's true. <laughs> Only through the contest of, flash, of clashing viewpoints do we have any hope of replacing mere opinion with knowledge. Exposure right. to controversial points of view does not constitute violence. A protest that prevents campus speakers from communicating with their audience is a coercive act. These all seem like obvious points, great points. Are they not commonly shared on your campus? You know, um, actually, I think they are commonly shared. Um, dozens and dozens of my colleagues, I've been uh, teaching for 41 years now, and I've never seen anything like this before, but most of my colleagues, I think, um, agree with these basic principles of free speech. I mean, this isn't, this is just basically free speech 101. Uh, nothing that I wrote with my great younger colleague, Keegan Callanan in the poly political science department, nothing here is brain, it's not brain surgery. You know, we were uh, frustrated and horrified by what happened at Middlebury last Thursday and the shutting down of this speech by Dr. Murray. And, um, we got together this weekend and said, you know, why don't we just hammer out what are the basic principles of free speech, more or less for ourselves, and then let's um, circulate it among the faculty and, and see if there's some agreement here. And, you know, it took us, it took us only an hour to sit down and say, well, what, you know, the, the, in, in 1776, America fought the battle of a free speech. These are enlightenment values, and I'm kind of a free speech fundamentalist, and I believe that the function of the university is to provide a place where those with every viewpoint, left, right, center, and now, of course, it's like the rainbow. There's so many, even on the right and the left, there's obviously a zillion different opinions. I think a university is, should be, if nothing else, a place, a space, shall we say that contemporary phrase, a space where free discourse can happen, where ideas can clash, people can disagree, and I actually think we're at such an amazing inflection point in American culture right now, because I think people are, I know I am, utterly fed up with the coarseness, the incivility of discourse in the United States. I think we've come to a point, this inflection point, where we have to step back, all of us who are rational human beings, whatever our political viewpoints, whatever candidates or parties we stand for, and say to ourselves, what are, what are the basic principles we agree on here? I mean, we, we organized ourselves as a nation a couple hundred years or more ago, saying this is a place where we get to talk freely about our ideas. We set up these universities based on enlightenment principles, and we supposedly adhere to them. I mean, I hope, to believe, I hope and believe that my own classrooms are a place where students can challenge me and feel free to challenge me. They don't yeah. shut me down, and I never shut them down. Amen. Well, I'm for that. There was one point in here that I thought was mm -hmm. so wise, it, it stirred my heart, actually, you wrote, and I'm quoting. Oh, yeah. A good yeah. education produces modesty with respect to our own intellectual powers and opinions, as well as openness to considering contrary views. This is what is lacking in this debate, is modesty. People believe that their yeah. way is right and that no one else could have an alternative view. Do you think that modern university life inculcates that modesty in students? Well, obviously it doesn't, and I think it's a problem. And I think it's why we have to go back, unfortunately, to free speech 101 and what is the purpose of the university. And I think inculcating modesty, why, why should we be modest? I mean, I have a lot to be modest about. I don't know that much. None of us do. You yes, don't. I don't. Exactly. You know, we, you know, we all, pres uh, Robert Frost, I did a biography of Frost 20 years ago, and I love his phrase. He said, you know, we all proceed on insufficient knowledge. Exactly. And, and I think we, you proceed, I mean, here you are, I'm sure debating a million people going over a lot of ideas. You proceed on insufficient knowledge. I'm not accusing you of that because. No, you're I right. I do. Of course. I proceed in my life on insufficient knowledge, and that's why we have to be modest. And I mean, I think we have to actually teach people modesty. Yes. And I, I think that's one thing. We, that's where we have failed. And, I, and the problem is we're not really 
frankly, seeing modesty anywhere in the culture very often. No, and that's the key to parenthood is raising children who know what they don't know. Really quickly, we're almost out of time. How many yeah. of your colleagues signed this? What percentage would you say of the faculty signed this um, statement I'd of say, belief? I'd say we're certainly up to a quarter. Um, we've left it open until March 11th or 12th. And every day we're getting another dozen or two dozen signatures. I think I forget what we're up to now, but dozens and dozens and dozens of my colleagues. And what's so interesting, when I looked over the signatories, I saw young people, old people. I saw people of Good. color and white people. I saw people that I know are hard, not hard left, but left. People yes. who are not hard right, but right. Um, right. People who are libertarians. Uh, I was really quite thrilled by this coming together. And I think, oh my goodness, we might be at the beginning of something quite wonderful in this culture. And maybe it only begins when you have a little conflict like we had here last week. I think that's right. If you get to 65% of the faculty, I'm going to send my kids there. Thanks a lot, okay. <laughs> Professor. Yeah, thank you, Tucker. It was great. We welcome your children. We welcome. Thank we you welcome. very much.